Hey, this is Jairus from the Barber Skate Shop. Behind the scenes at Barber Skate Shop. This week we got my man Dwayne Bacon, which is, he's a Lakeland native. His accolades speak for itself as a 2015 McDonald's All-American high school senior year. He led his team to a 45 and 0 season. And at school he was at was Oak Hill. Um, he continued to make a mark after committing to Florida State where he became CBS Sports Freshman of the Week, three-time ACC Rookie of the Week, and second team All-American. In 2017, he was drafted by the New Orleans Pelicans. And before, after that, he made his NBA debut with the Charlotte Hornets. He was played several years from there. In 2020, he became his way back home and played for Orlando Magic. And here we are now. That's all about right. All right, cool. That's all about right. All right, cool, man. Um, first, man, um, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad y'all having me. And um, it's been a long time. We talked about this, what, at least, what, two years ago, maybe? Mm -hmm. A couple years ago when I brought the bus out? It was about two years ago when we first got the bus. I, I got a haircut outside of your house in the bus and we was talking about it. So it's been, it's been a couple of years since then, yeah. It's been a while, man. So um, cool, man. All right, can you uh tell us a little bit about your journey into basketball? Well, at first I was big on football. Right. Um, I was actually just talking about it today. I got to high school like ninth grade and I was like, at the JV, I played for Lakeland. I was going to McKeel, played for Lakeland JV football. After my JV season, I went up one practice with Lakeland. I was like, all right, that's it for me with football. I ain't, I ain't with the getting hit alone. I don't want to get hit. I don't want to go across the middle and, and just get hit wrong. Mm -hmm. um, and I just switched to basketball. I was playing before that. I probably started taking it serious, like around fifth grade for real. Um, but just being trying to play both sports. But once I got into it, I knew it was what I wanted to do. So, so what inspired you to play basketball? Um, it was just, you know, as a kid here, it's all we got is sports mostly. So I was just trying to play everything. Um, I was trying to play basketball. I was trying to play football. I was trying to play both at the same time up until, like, just to keep me busy. It was always something that, you know, had people going in the neighborhood. Um, everybody from here loved football, whether right. it's the Gators, Florida State. So it was just like coming up, I feel like that's what you had to do. Right. Um, and that was just my path. I, like, it started with football, but it quickly shifted to basketball. It just was like I felt like it was so easy. Yeah. Playing at Simpson Park my first first time, I felt like, all right, like I can do this for a long time. I can, I can do this. And it's funny you say about that football because I remember when you was playing football and I asked you what inspired you. I know what inspired that lick was inspired yeah. from, man. I'm too tall. Yeah, you I'm, way, I'm way too tall. Like, it was just, I know, playing when I was younger, I was still taller than everybody, but it was like, I at the time, I was only playing football. Mm -hmm. Flagged into like, what? Sixth grade, probably. I was like mm -hmm. playing a lot of football more than way more than basketball. Mm -hmm. Like every year, I was getting ready for the Lumberjacks to play football, play mm -hmm. football, play football. Um, and once I got to high school, it was just like, nah, like uh, my body started to fill in. I started mm -hmm. seeing these different athletic abilities, and it was just like, nah, I don't want to play football no more. Mm -hmm. Like, I just want to stick to basketball. I feel like I can, if I do go somewhere, I can do it in, in basketball. Mm -hmm. Then be inside. Huh? Yeah. That AC way better because AC that's Florida heat. You get to run up and down. You get to shoot. It's way better than in the sun. That Florida heat will kill you. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. yeah, man. All right, cool. So, so that's what pretty much inspires you. Yeah, play basketball that, to change over. Yeah, just the. I don't know, man. I was just trying to. I knew for a fact that I wanted more for myself, mm -hmm. but I knew that early, mm -hmm. like tenth grade. Was what after my tenth grade year at McKeel, that was, I was like, I want to leave. Mm -hmm. so I ended up going to break. And, and that's right, because um, let's see, McKeel, you went to McKeel, then you went to IMG, mm -hmm. and then you went to Oak Hill. Yep. So how how was that that journey from or the the transition from each school? How how was that? McKeel was, McKeel was everything. <laughs> I feel like McKeel what really started me in basketball. Mm -hmm. uh, Coach G, he passed actually, I want to say earlier this year, he passed away. Coach G. And he was my coach in, at, McK at McKeel Elementary, right here, mm -hmm. um, fifth grade. 
that's when I really like, all right. Mm-hmm. He was the one that was telling me, like, all right, you can be serious in this. Like, mm-hmm. like you sure, like, you raw? Like, I'm like, this was like my second year playing. I think I played a little bit of fourth grade at Sim. If that, I don't even, I'm not even too sure. But it's really like my first time playing. And I'm like, mm-hmm. if he's seeing it in me and this my first year meeting him, I'm like, man, like, I might can really do something. Mm-hmm. And it was just me and Corey at P every time we playing around. He's like, man, I'm about to call the coach. Mm-hmm. So he ended up calling Gandy at McKeel. I end up going there sixth grade. By seventh grade, I'm on varsity. So yeah. it's like, all right, like now I'm this one. I'm really locking in. Like mm-hmm. I'm working out. Like I'm trying to put everything into this. And by tenth grade, I was like, yo, I want to leave. Like, like I know I'm bigger than the city. Like I had been traveling for AAU every everywhere. So mm-hmm. I'm like, man, no, nah, I know I'm bigger than this. So mm-hmm. it was just like I going to IMG was different. You stay on campus. My first time away from home. But I like embraced it. I fell into it. Like I felt like I ain't have nothing at home. Mm-hmm. Corey ended up leaving that year, coming back early, going to Kathleen. So after my season, I ended up leaving because we was like, that's when IMG was first starting. It ain't right. it wasn't like it is now. Right. Um, now it's like a powerhouse. It's like, for for basketball. Or yeah, for, all for basketball, sports? really for all sports. But, honestly, they biggest, I think, at that time, they didn't even have football, but they biggest at the time, I think it was like baseball, where they had all the guys coming to their facilities mm-hmm. and and baseball stars, and they was making stars in baseball. Right. But around my year, that was like their first year of football, second year, bas- third year of basketball. So it was fresh, but it was like I wanted to go play on a national schedule. But right. then when I got there, we only playing like seven teams because in that area, it ain't really a lot of teams. They got the funds, but they don't really know how they want to do it. They was figuring it out. So when I came back at the end, after the season in IMG, my 11th grade, year, I ended up going to Oak Hill. That was probably the best decision I ever made in my life for basketball mm-hmm. because it was like I was isolated. I remember my mom and my dad dropping me off and they was crying. I'm like, man, y'all can leave. Like, <laughs> I'm ready. I'm locked in. I'm talking about like you couldn't have phones. It was mm-hmm. all eat, sleep, mm-hmm. wake up, basketball, basketball, back, and then I fell hey. in love with it. All right, now, and Oak Hill, Oak Hill is in a rural area. Yeah, it's in Mouth of Wilson, Virginia. How you say it? Mouth, Mouth of Wilson. Wilson. Yeah. Mouth of Wilson. When Mouth I saw Wilson. it, I thought that was interesting. Middle middle middle. I've never heard of that. Middle Mouth middle of middle. Middle. Wilson. Yeah, when I got there, my coach was telling me a story how Brandon Jennings first got there and he tried to run away, but it's nowhere to go. <laughs> Walking the furthest to the furthest store is going to be an hour. So he tried to run away. So like, like where you going to go? Yeah, even when we was traveling to leave, like, first of all, to get out of okay, you got to go down a long hill just to mm-hmm. end of the street. Then it's like, you know, they, they hunting out there. It's all mm-hmm. trees and, and it's all trees. They hunting. Yeah, like, no they was telling us, all right, you leave, you get shot, it's kind of on you. Yeah. So if you don't want to be, I advise you to get in the car with your parents and just go home. Nah. They had them good scare tactics. Yeah, they had them good scare tactics. But, man, we was in love with it. Like, we was never, once we started playing, you was playing. Like, Every uh, every week we was playing uh-huh. somewhere. It was an amazing experience. I got to go to Hawaii, LA for like the first time. I didn't know you went to Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. we played Oak Hill. Yeah, Oak Hill. We played in Hawaii. We had a tournament there, so yeah. we was going everywhere. We uh-huh. was going to Hawaii, St. Louis, LA, Atlanta. So it, it gave you that exposure. Yeah, it gave. And me. It made you want more because of those trips that you got to see that you weren't seeing here. Really, it. it I was already wanted to go there just because of the legendary lineup they had. Right. They had KD go there, Carmelo Anthony go there, mm-hmm. Rondo go there, mm-hmm. Steve Blake. Like I can I can give you a crazy list that okay. Mm-hmm. So it was like I already knew that from the jump. So when they wanted me, I'm like, like it was a no brain like, like, Yeah, I'm going. Like, I'm going. And I ended up going there, having a lot of success, you know, making it to the national championship, losing in New York. Um but and that was that was after, cause that was after the McDonald's All American yeah, game, right? Yeah, and, y'all right was, after. and y'all was right 40, forty five and zero. It was forty five and zero. Forty five. First and game losing all season, like crazy. Well, actually, we had one. We had lost the game, but they had a player that was like grown already. So they had a grown man, man on so they actually gave us that <laughs> win back, but. Man, that was our first time really losing a real game to Mount Verde from our mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is crazy. I took a visit before I went to kill the man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, and I remember when we were in Chicago. Well, actually, before you went to uh, um, 
Oh, kill. Remember, I used to, I used to say, I get, I catch one of your games. Uh, I always try to get to the kids that come to the shop, the games and stuff like that. You remember I told you, I say, man, I can't, I just can't just come up there like that. But yeah. if you make it to the McDonald's All American game, I'm gonna come. You came and cut me. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I remember you came up there. You came to my room. I don't know if I came to your room. You came to my room. Nah, I went yeah, to your room. You cut me. That, that was. Like, and it was you and um um Jalen Brown. Y'all yeah. were roommates. Yeah. And your 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 friends uh um probably my it was a couple it was the it was Risco Risco Blakeney it was all the bees yep. Ben Simmons because y'all were known as the three bees triple bees yeah three bees Blakeney Ben Brisco it was it we were always in there Brown Jalen Brown like we was just yeah we was chilling mm -hmm. that was an amazing experience though some that yeah like you know. I don't, I don't know that. I don't know. I just kind of switched the different gear once I hit. Like, uh -huh. I'm going to 11th grade. It's like so many different things that was in reach that uh -huh. I feel like I can get. So, mm -hmm. Especially because at that at that point, that was your greatest moment from that point as you working your yeah. way up. Yeah, by far. That wasn't even close. Because that McDonald's, it, 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 it opened, it opened and, my yeah, eyes. And Jordan brand, that was like, all right, like, I could be big. Mm-hmm. Like bigger than I thought I, you know, could ever be, and and where I'm from, like, like I don't know. It, I don't think to this day we ever had a McDonald's All American besides me. Here, no, um, I'm sure. So it was just like to me, right? That was a lot. That was, uh -huh. that was I accomplished something. So I just wanted to keep going, mm -hmm. see how far I could go. Yeah, that that was that was big. That was actually big for me, man. I was excited for you. I was like, dang, man. Yeah. I've been knowing this man since he was a little boy. A kid. Now he up in here in Chicago. And I'm like, okay, all these guys, they were big name guys. And I'm like, oh, yeah, my dog ready. He finna turn up. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, dog, I know you about to do it. You better go. I'm like, man, you better go out. I know you finna go out there and kill me. He's like, man, I got to save some of the energy because we go back and play the championship. We got to go back and play the championship. We got to go back and we play had to go back. Right, right after the, the next day was the tournament started. Jalen was there. Ben was there with his team. Man. Well, Alonzo, man, that, that tournament was loaded. Miles was in it with Huntington Prep. Like, man, it was a battle every game mm -hmm. to get to the championship, man. And that was that was one of the best moments of my high school career, too. Like, just being in New York, mm -hmm. like, being in a tournament, I felt like I was already, like, you know, I felt like it was like the playoff final. Like, we playing real deal games just to get to Madison. So, Club. so, so, okay, so that, that champion, that, that high school, high school championship then, that was in New York? Yeah. Okay, in Madison Square Garden? Yep, Madison Square Garden. Well, if you win all the games, at first it's at Christ the King High School. You win all the games, you get to the championship at Madison Square Garden. So it's a pretty much a tournament. Yeah, it's, it's not tournament. like just a championship. You had to play Ooh, to it. Yeah, you had to play to it. You oh, don't just get okay. there. No, okay. No, nah, nah, we was 45 and 0, but that was only the okay. conference I seeded. Oh, okay. So we was the one seed. Okay. So it ended up being us and Mount Verde, the one and the two seed. But to get there, that's what we went through the most stuff. Like it was like a battle. Like coming in here 45 over the one seed, anybody can beat you. Mm -hmm. Anybody can beat you. We had about <laughs> the first game, the second game, all the way to the championship. So it was like, but it was fun because uh -huh. you got them competing. Uh -huh. um, the kids, we talking, talking junk. Yeah, yeah. Was like, we was talking junk. Like it was just fun. We were talking that, junk at the McDonald's and, game. And it was fun. Yeah, and that that game, I was, I, I remember. I, I don't know if you remember, but I said under the goal. Yeah. I said, I said, I got four seats right underneath the goal, so I could hit everything yeah, that y'all were saying. I was like crazy. And I heard you coming to that. Talking trash, I said, this man on top. What are you doing talking trash? Talking crazy. It was only because of them though. Jalen, he liked to talk. Then Joker was talking Big trash. To talk, but uh, uh, Ingram, yeah, Brandon, he was talking. He was talking. Everybody major was trash. like, man, but it was it's fun. It was like a, almost like a. It was to me. It was like a, a pickup game in the neighborhood mm -hmm. with all the best hustlers. With the best, best, the best you know, um, yeah. We had we had a talented group too. A lot of guys that's made the lead. A lot of guys that's still in the lead. Like we had a, a good class. Mm -hmm. All right, now then you you you, okay. After that, then you got drafted. You got drafted to the Pelicans, mm -hmm. and then you were traded traded the same to, night to Charlotte. Same night to to Charlotte, and that's when you became the Jordan. And you was the, but you were a Jordan athlete before that. No, uh, that was, was after. Well, I was. I think it really picked up because I we was Jordan Brand at Oak Hill. Okay. So it was kind of like a word. 
I remember like writing my Oak Hill coach like, yo, I want to be a joy athlete. He was like, all right, I'm going to see. And then I ended up going to Charlotte, getting traded to Charlotte, and it was like, it just fell in my lap. Jordan yeah. was like, hey, you want to be Jordan? I'm like, well, yeah, I was, just asking, I, was just asking, I was just asking B-Rock, like, that's my Oak Hill coach. I was just asking B, like, I'm trying to be Jordan. This before the draft, uh -huh. like. Cause I already think I'm feeling like you feel I'm, I'm getting drafted. Like I'm, I'm I'm walking with confidence. I'm like, man, I want to be a Jordan athlete. Uh -huh. So I asked him. He like, man, I gotta see. Like I'm gonna let you know. Whatever. Like he, I think he did the most he could. He always looked mm -hmm. out. But once I got drafted and traded to Charlotte, Jordan I'm like, yeah, we want you to be a Jordan athlete. I was like, all right, bet. I wanted to be this anyway. Right. So I, it was just I don't know. It was a blessing. Kind of fell in my lap. And I mean, he came and got me though. Mm -hmm. Jordan traded up to make that, you know, get me to Charlotte. Like right. he actually wanted me to come there. So right. that was a, a big thing too. Okay, cool, man. So um, what has been the most memorable moment in your NBA career? Most memorable? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, probably all the times I played Bron. Cause every time I feel like I done had a good game against LeBron. Every time I done played against the Lakers or Cleveland, I played well, uh -huh. like, so. It don't really be like the memorable moments, but it be like the moments where like I know I belong here. Mm -hmm. I know where this where I'm supposed to be. Right. Like play when I played with Orlando, I had twenty six on the Lakers. When mm -hmm. I played with Charlotte, a game I had twenty one. You feel me? I done had eighteen or or someone. He was in in uh, Cleveland, so every time I done played well enough to tell myself like I know I can play. Mm -hmm. Like I know I belong here. I I feel like that's what's most memorable about my career, just because it's like. When you know where you belong and, mm -hmm. and what you done did and where you come from, it's like this is big. And then and that was from national. Was that different different training that you got? Like when you got to play these top players like LeBron. LeBron, that's that's well, I just in this, in this era, in this era, you know, and it's it's debatable that who's the the goat. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But LeBron is the one, the guy, for to me. In this era, other than Kobe, yeah, uh, I don't know. Did you get? You didn't get to play Kobe. No, I, I ain't you get didn't to play get to play Kobe. Kobe. Um, so, so your time in the NBA, you playing LeBron. That's like okay. That's where you playing this guy. That's I, I, I'm testing my skills right yeah. now. This let like you say is let me is let you is let me know I could be here. Right, but it was like I don't know. You go through all of it of doing your work. I never question my work because mm -hmm. I know what I put in. But when you go out there and play against Bron and you do certain things and it's like, all right, like you look at, yeah, he may not be guarding me every play, but I'm cooking a team. Mm -hmm. Like I ain't trying to be all about myself, but I'm cooking a team. So it's just like, all right, well, you can play. Like I could, I'm, I, I was for sure better than some of Bron skill wise. Some of Bron like you know most important guys that he used. Mm -hmm. Like, so it was just like, I don't know, it was an eye opener for me more than just like, all right, what is my, you feel me, how I felt about it. It mm -hmm. was more like, all right, motherfucker, keep going. Like, yeah. keep pushing, like, keep going, bro, you got it. Like, and that's what you was telling yourself. That's, that's what, she, that's what you're telling like, yourself, like, like, you got it. It may actually made me want to go. I think I changed my work ethic the first time I played Brun, KD, Steph, because it's like, bro, I can play the, like regardless of anybody seeing it, I still, you know, I'm putting that time, I'm putting that work because it's like I'm trying to get to their level. So just mm -hmm. seeing how they go through it and how effortless they make it seem, that's mm -hmm. what I'm trying to get to. Right. Okay. Now, um, can you share some of your your training routines and your methods that that help you out in the league? Huh? They help you out. Yeah. Well, we really get a lot of time. When you're in the league, you get a lot of time. Um, most people think like, all right, you got 24 hours in a day, really 12 in that day, but Probably wake up, practice at like 10. Um, most of the time, it's just one practice a day. So most people probably, after you practice, lift, get some shots up, either before practice or after practice, mm -hmm. then get your lift in. Then you really be done with the, with the day as far as the team. Mm -hmm. But you got the option to come in, what, two, three hours after, mm -hmm. midnight, midnight, whenever you want to. After that time, you practice and get your stuff in and get your extra shots. So that's... Honestly, most of the time I was doing what I was doing. And and like what were you doing? Like what are some of the drills? Like if it was a, a kid or you trying to tell somebody like man, most of the time you start like off with ball handling. Ball, yeah, most of the time you start off with ball handling. 
Got to keep it sharp. Got to keep it tight. Ball handling. Um, not too much. I don't never really do too much ball handling because I don't, I'm not a point guard to where I'm doing all that mm-hmm. dribbling. Um, I'm, most of the time, I, most of my career, I don't play shooting guard or small four. So a lot of shots, mid range, threes. Threes is what, you know, the league wants. So I'm shooting a lot of threes. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to get mines up. Like I didn't come in the league as a three point shooter. Mm-hmm. But that's when I was there, that's what the league was transitioning to. All mm-hmm. threes. Just threes. Curry was winning championships. And so they won everybody. All those guys, like yeah. All those guys was shooting a lot of threes. That, that was their repetition. Get up a lot uh-huh. of threes. So I was putting in a lot of time on my threes. The mid-range was really there. So I was kind of trying to get away from it because when I was on Charlotte, they didn't even want us to take mid-range shots. Really? Yeah, they, they didn't like it. It was all threes or get to the rack. Mm-hmm. And I knew I could get to the rack. So most of my workouts was just shooting threes. A lot of repetition off the dribble. A uh-huh. lot of catch and shoot. Because I might be in these situations mostly, you know, I'm not the superstar player. Well, I wasn't there yet. So it's just like, you know, I got to simulate my workout to how I'm going to be in the game. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, when you get to that corner, when Mm -hmm. I catch it, you either catch and shoot or you catch. When they jump, blow by, get to the rack, lay up. Mm -hmm. I had an easy game to to recognize. You got Kim at the point, Mm -hmm. Jay Lamb at the two, I'm at the three. So I already knew what my repetition game was. If I get it in transition, I break them down, get to the rack, or make a pass. If I, you feel me? If I catch it in that corner, it's either a shot or get to the rack. So most of mine was catching and shooting and off the dribble shooting, off the dribble shooting threes because that's what I had to perfect to keep staying on the floor in defense. But I didn't really have to work on that. Like at that time, I was, I would say I was one of our best defenders on Charlotte. Mm-hmm. I came in actually playing. Like getting that opportunity, uh, Cliff gave me the opportunity, which was our coach, to just be up there, learn, and I was soaking it in. Mm-hmm. Cool, man, cool. So, how do you stay mentally focused and resilient during high pressure situations? Oh, you just know everything that you practice. Everything that I practice is for big moment. I don't think I never shot away from the big moment. I think I don't know. My first game in the league, I started. <laughs> Most people don't know that. My first ever regular season game in the NBA, I started. And I actually played good. So mm-hmm. it was like, I felt like I was always ready for the big You always moment. had that mental toughness. But I just always had to keep, you know, I always been a worker. I was always ready for that big moment because I done been through it so many times. Uh-huh. Then, like, you know what I mean? The, the fans ain't that crazy in the league. Like, I done had college arenas. Yelling, shouting, and I'm the best player on, on Florida State. Yelling, shouting. Uh, if a whole crowd against me. Like, you talking about Florida, Florida State, and you know I ain't never like Florida State. Yeah, I, I, like, I, man, I, I, I like I, you. I, I, used say, I, used say, I used to say, man, I ain't wearing no shirt. Yeah, I don't care. I said, I'm, I'm pulling for you, but I ain't wearing the shirt. Man. Like, man, I ain't yeah. wearing no shirt. You know, I got to pick you up. You remember that picture you get took on? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Uh-huh. You don't remember? With the U? Nah, see. Everybody from here though either love Miami or they love Florida, Florida. State. Florida game. Florida, 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 Florida State. It's, it's a couple people like Florida State and Lakeland, but not a lot of people. It's a lot. Like it. It's a lot. It's a lot. I feel I be feeling like so many people against it. But I love it. Like, cause it's like, I done beat Miami. I done beat Florida. <laughs> so I'm really the king of you feel I done did my thing. So so um so and that and that pressure. You was able to the, the the being in those environments at Florida State and college because those college atmosphere that it's insane. Yeah, it's insane. It's insane. They going crazy. It's so, it's they going crazy. That's some of the best like excitement you can get. And, it's then, and, and it, it is and pressure playing in it. I remember my freshman year against Florida. I had a game winner my first year against Florida, in Florida. So I got all these people, uh, and but and I had so many family members there, mm-hmm. like rooting for me, but it's all these fans. And that's when it was like, all right, pressure, I like it. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I want to be in the pressure. When when the, when the game on the line and it's a lot of pressure and everybody take that gas, I want to be the one to take the shot. So it ain't no pressure. No, it ain't no pressure. Your pipe ain't no pressure. Because you either, you either make the shot or you, you miss the shot. Yeah. Like, I ain't really thinking too much on it. Basketball is mm-hmm. simple, man. You. Put put it, like, yeah, you put the ball in the, I ain't really, I'm either going to hit the shot or I'm going to miss the shot. And every time it, the last shot on line, I'm thinking I'm hitting the shot. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking like that. I know what I'm going to do. I know how to get to my spots. I don't put in too many hours. I'm hitting the shot. Mm-hmm. That's just how I feel about it. Cool, man. 
So what do you think is the key is to building a strong team chemistry? Like on the court and off the court. Everybody got to be on the same page. Got to be on the same page. Yeah. Everybody got to, I don't know, you got to have the right leader. You got to have the right guys to fall in line. It's easy in basketball for everybody to want to be the man. Mm -hmm. Everybody might have the same abilities, mm -hmm. but you might not get a chance to display it the same way as the next guy because you probably, you know, y'all got here two different ways. I was watching some, I was watching, um, I was watching a podcast and had uh, um, Dwayne Wade, and he said something. He said he was a great player, but he became a better player. He became one of the GOATs when he had a team. Mm -hmm. That's when he became one of the best players because of his team, his surrounding cast, his team. Yeah, he had help. He had help. Yeah, when he, when he, he had help. When, I mean, he was great when he was by himself. He won a championship. I ain't gonna really say by himself, but yeah, mostly yeah. by himself. He and, and and getting that chemistry and that those teams to play together, that's a lot, that's a lot of work. It is. And, a lot and, of work. and, and with, I think that that fall, I think that falls on the coach. Um, I think it falls on the coach because to me, the NBA, to me, this is just my personal opinion. I've always felt like the NBA ain't nothing but a uh, uh, it's a team is a team full of ball hogs, mm -hmm. and to me, when you in high school, you kind of got to be that ball hog. You got to sign to make it. You trying to make it, regardless on everybody else. When you're in high school, you got to make it. You got to be that dog. You got to be that dude. And when you get to the NBA, now it's time to make everybody get these dogs to play together as a team because each team is full of all dogs. It's full of dogs, you know, so you have to come within that team and a good team where everybody buy in and have that mentality to work together, you know. So so um, how was that experience in, in the teams that you played with um, when you were in um, um, Charlotte as uh, far as that, that team? It, and was, getting that it chemistry? was difficult, honestly. It was my, my rookie year. We had Kimball. We had Dwight. Um, we had oh man, we had Jeremy Lamb, which everybody was good attitude wise. Every mm -hmm. like I'm I'm a rookie. Mm -hmm. Me and Malik Monk, we was rookies, and we coming in like man, we just we just want to play. We'll do anything y'all mm -hmm. tell us to do. We just want to play. So we kind of fell under the white wing, and you know to the team it was like all right, like he got like I don't know. We just had that disconnect. The white wanted all these different things, the team wanted all these different things, so it, it started to butt head. That's mm -hmm. why Dwight was only there a year. Mm -hmm. like, so it just started to, like, we we crashing. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the year after that, when Dwight left, um, things started to flow more because we had a bunch of guys that just didn't care. Like, mm -hmm. everybody was just trying to play for each other, and we, were, we ended up being one game out of the playoffs that year. So, you can, I feel like you can see the difference. Like, whether it's one player, whether it's three players, so they just kind of everybody got to be on the same and page. They kind of lost the chemistry. Yeah, we kind of lost the chemistry our first year because it's like you have games the white one thirty touches, but he can get you thirty and thirty. Mm -hmm. See this, this one I'm not understanding. I'm new to the league, but I mean, this man has been a superstar, like mm -hmm. Hall of Famer, easy. You got Kimba, who is currently All NBA. Mm -hmm. All star, which Kimba don't complain, but the white just feel like I ain't getting enough touches. Mm -hmm. So it's like I don't know, like, and, and it was most of the white. I ain't saying the white and Kimba. I'm just saying they the two biggest players. But you had an incident where you know Jay Lamb felt some type of way about like it was just just, just it, it was just Kimba. different. And I'm and, and I'm a rookie, so I'm I'm sitting there like. I don't know what's going on. I don't know how to react. I don't know how to fix it. All I can do is listen to my older guys, my vets that's been here, mm -hmm. and just play it cool, keep working every day. Right. Keep that, that you know, that was my young days. But when I got to Orlando, when I first got there, we had chemistry. Everybody had played together. And you know, I was new, but we had chemistry before before our point guard had, had got hurt. We had like, we was in sync. We was mm -hmm. number two in the East. Mm -hmm. Like we was working, like. Mm -hmm. Everything was just clicking. Mm -hmm. 
once our point guard got hurt, everything went downhill because everybody caught started falling apart. But he was that he was the right leader for us. He was yeah. getting everybody involved, uh -huh. and he was talking. He didn't have to be that loud and vocal, but he was. He kept everything on track. That's how we. I felt like we started the season so well All right. in Orlando. Okay, cool man. Um, can you share with me a challenging moment? Do you have a challenging moment, and how did you overcome it? Uh, I dealt. Well, I felt like I dealt with the. Well, I did deal deal with depression when I was in Charlotte, just from not playing. Like you said, everybody who come up being a man in basketball. Whether you in any sport, honestly, to try to get to the league, everybody come up being a man. You yeah, come you up be having be everything your tough. way, and you got to be mental tough. I felt like I was better than everybody in my position my first two years. Mm -hmm. And I just wasn't getting the playing time I felt like I deserved. But that's when I learned to just control the what you what you could control. Mm -hmm. That's when I, you feel me, had to just dig in and be like, but it was days I was really going through it bad. Not just, just simply not because I'm not on the floor. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I'm just not on the floor, and I felt like personality in front of me, bro, there's no way he should be on the floor right now, and I'm not on the floor. He was way older. I'm way younger. You feel me? I can, I can put it in a hole if, if you need me to. Right. I can play defense. Like I, I, I don't know. I was just, I had fell so deep into my thoughts and and being mad at myself as if. Beating myself, oh, you ain't good enough, bro. You just ain't good enough. But I had made it already. Mm -hmm. And I ain't really realized that to what I, I think I dealt with it like a a year and a half. Mm -hmm. So so how, how did you overcome that? I started talking to somebody at one point. <laughs> I felt like that wasn't working. Um, I don't know, man. I just really went to working harder. I started going to the gym more, mm -hmm. um, playing a lot of wars, just everything to stay on the floor to take my mind off it. And anytime I was working out and I was on the floor, I wasn't really thinking about all the other stuff because this is where I can just come be myself and enjoy myself mm -hmm. and I can be by myself. I can be with my kids. Um, so it was like, that was kind of my therapy more than anything. Try to talk to somebody, mm -hmm. but it wasn't really, I didn't feel like it was really for that me. Basketball, it, that's, that's your therapy. That's yeah. your thing. So just getting in the gym with music blasting and I could just shoot, sweat, Mm -hmm. Get tired, drink water, repeat. Mm -hmm. That was kind of my thing to go to. Man, you know what? Um, in my younger days, well, until cutting hair became like my job, job. Well, I ain't gonna say my job, job, but that was one of my therapists. Like, if something would bother me, I cut hair all day and all night. Mm -hmm. I cut hair all day, literally, and all night without even eating. Cause it would take my mind away from anything. Once I go across that threshold, cross the open, when I get inside the shop, that's it. Yeah. Everything was outside. Everything, you know. Um, shoot, even when I was on Memorial, my first shop, I was going through a lot, man. I had uh, just bought a house. I just had my daughter. Uh, my relationship was it was on the rocks, and I had just had my daughter, you know. Um, but when I would go across that threshold in the door. All that was behind him. It was like it was not on my mind at all, at all. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I be getting so competitive with anything mm -hmm. I do. It's just like I don't be having time time to think about anything else mm -hmm. when I'm in between the lines. It's like I be that dialed in. I'm thinking about like you feel me, and I'm a scorer, so it's like mm -hmm. I'm always thinking of ways I can get a bucket. But that's why I felt like the game comes so easy to me. Like I, I felt like it had gotten to a point where. People may have think I wasn't like really putting that time in, but I've mm -hmm. always put that time in. I just felt like the game had got so easy to me. Like when you put that work in and you confident in your game, then that's what shows. There's no way you can go in the NBA and average double figures mm -hmm. and somebody say you ain't put that work in mm -hmm. because that's hard. <laughs> double figures is hard. Yeah. So cool, man. So aside from basketball, do you have any other hobbies? Uh, interest in it yeah. here? Any other, anything I, else? I do a little music here and there. Just to take my, I'm not, I'm not trying to sign or anything. It's just something that just be, I don't know, it make me feel good. Yeah. It's just another thing. I love music regardless. Like I listen to music 24 seven. Anybody that truly know me know that I'm a big music guy. Mm -hmm. So I'm always locked into some type of music. I don't got a catalog, a crazy catalog of songs, but I do got songs that I just like and made. 
Um, and sometimes they put them out. And mm-hmm. I'm I'm big into fashion, so I got a, a clothing line that I made with my son's name. Um, I'm actually I had a pop up here early this summer. I think it was like July, what July, June or July. One of them. I had a pop up went well, and I'm about to drop the website uh, the twenty third. Okay. Uh, for, and I make jeans right now, but we're going to expand socks, shirts, hats, everything. You just take it one step at a time right now. Cool, man. Cool. Um, like, um, who are some of the people like that were role models or influencers that you had to impact you in your life, in role your careers models, and stuff like that? Yeah. That's just all over that I looked up to. Um, Denzel Washington. I feel like he just gave me a lot of knowledge. Did you ever get me? Never met him, but I just like watching his movies, watching his love talks. It's like he straight to it. Uh I mean, he real. I feel like without even knowing him, I feel like he real. But him, Jordan, Mike gave me so much knowledge. So I actually got to go to Mike's house, chill with him, talk to him, Mm -hmm. stay there for a couple days. So I don't feel like that's a, I feel like that's a, a moment that I always cherish because that's a lot of yeah, a lot of moments, man. Yeah. Just so really, Michael Jordan. Yeah. I don't know, man. Denzel Washington for sure. Michael Jordan. And those are those are some those are some real some yeah. good role models. Yeah. Them really is like them. Follow. Them the two people that I really like. I'm in tune with. Um, it was Will Smith until he pulled a little stunt with with the Rock. I mean, whatever. Yeah, Chris, like Tony, Chris, Chris, yeah, Rock. Chris Rock. But Denzel Washington is like somebody like I, I try to study mm-hmm. just because like his demeanor. from everything, yeah, from everything, his demeanor, the way he is with his wife, like, you feel me, the way he is when he talk, like what he about. And then Michael Jordan, like he cutthroat, but he he real. He know mm-hmm. what he want. Mm-hmm. He know how he want to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and he hold when he doing something, he hold everybody to the same standard that he will hold himself. I feel like that's the best way. Right. So those two people for sure. Okay. So with your platform, um, how do you use your 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 platform to make a positive impact on the community? Uh last year I started my first camp, um, my first celebrity game. Uh-huh. Um, just trying to give come back, do something, mm-hmm. you know, for the city that the city had never seen. The last year turnout was crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was, it was packed. Yeah, that gym was packed. Last year turnout was crazy. The camp was amazing. Yeah. Um, so just trying to do any and every little thing. Um, The camp was free. Mm-hmm. I didn't charge this. I don't feel like I should be charging these kids when you feel me. Nobody didn't come back and do this for me. Right. So that was my whole thing about coming back in. And, and do doing something. a free camp yeah, and, and giving them a, a free game as well because right. it was like, bro, I've never seen this. And in the platform and in the, in the position I'm in, I feel like my whole page and my whole image is, is positive. Right. Right. I've never had nothing negative come out about me. I try to keep my image clean because the one thing I don't want is for these kids to be looking up to me and you see some some BS out there right. that I really ain't about. So. Right. Every, I'm I'm grateful up until this point, 28 years. I've never had nothing negative out there. Mm-hmm. And I just try to stay in that positive light um, because I know how bad it can get. And I know, you know, these kids who follow, you know, they, they're easily influenced right now. Any wrongdoing, they're like, all right, he did it. So let me try that. So I just try to stay clean and, and do what I can. But feel me, I'm working on some more stuff to try to get these kids just to keep going up instead of backwards. Mm-hmm. Cool, man. Um, uh, let's see. Like, um, I know um, when you when you do when you did the camps, I thought I thought that was that was dope because a lot of kids do look up to you and they get a chance to see you. Mm-hmm. They was like, and when these kids see you, that's from here. It's like, man. I can be him. Yeah. I see him. He's from where I'm from. So I could actually visualize and see myself being in the NBA or for, first making it to college and then whatever else after that, like which is the NBA or whatever else, play, still playing, making a career out of something that they love to do. Um, so with that camp and when you brought it, man, kids was talking about that. They was like, man, I can't believe it, you know, 
And uh, I, I um, you may not remember in the shop one time, um, buddy uh, Philip, his son Jordan, and when you would come to the shop, and they grew up just like you grew up coming to the shop. He grew up coming to the shop, and he saw you, but he was like, he was like nervous. Yeah, he was nervous, man, and um, he like. He wanted to take a picture with you bad, and he was just like, he just was, he was like scared to talk to, you know, and um, he, froze. he, he and, and, and I think Jordan might have been, Jordan maybe might have, he might have been about 12, maybe, and Jordan was real good in basketball, and uh, the dad was like, man, just ask him, man, he, was, he just, he, he didn't know what to say, and um, his dad was like, man, he wanted to take a picture with you. And then um, y'all took the picture together, and he was he was happy about that, and he became a, a, a real good ball player until he hurt it, until he hurt his leg, and he lived in Tampa and played at Wharton, and now he's in college at USF. He wants to be a dentist, but the basketball, you know, that was his that was his hobby and whatnot. But you coming back and just being in the shop and them seeing, excuse me, was aspiration for him that they could make it somewhere else, you know, um, and just do better. And they, with the kids seeing you and seeing that, it helps a lot of them. It does. It does when they see you around. And, and your name is it, it's good. It hasn't been tarnished. So that that's that's a plus. And that's uh, and I commend you on that for keeping your name good. You know, because um, when you mess your name up, it's, it's you may not realize that you are an idol or an icon, and you're on this platform because it's you doing it. And when you out there, you, you just don't realize it because it's you. But you are a role model and these kids see it. And that's good that you think like that because that's 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 big, man. And you watching what you do and all that, because we all normal. We all we all make mistakes. We do. Um so that that's that's cool, man. I commend you on that, dog. Appreciate that. All right, cool, man. And um let's see, uh I know we 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 got a few few minutes to huh? I got, I got you, man. I know you got to get out of here, man. And you're only in time for a few days. And I'm glad you came by to be on the podcast that we're trying to get started. Well, I ain't going to say we're trying to get started. Yeah, we're here. We're doing it. Y'all doing it. Yeah, we're doing it. So um, if you have any advice to give a young player that's aspiring to be in the NBA, what advice would that be? What would you give? You got to go at, You got to go at your own pace. You got to be your own person. Um, there's going to be a lot of people that don't believe you can do mm -hmm. what you think you can do. Mm -hmm. But as long as you think you can do it, and that's all that matters. <laughs> that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. Like, it, I, I know for a fact it's probably a lot of people from here that didn't think I can go to the levels I've reached. Mm -hmm. But I always believe in myself. Right. I ain't never see the validation from nobody else. Like, you feel what I'm saying? If, if anything that I feel like I can do, like, it's, I feel like it's just like wearing an outfit. Most people judge your outfit. They try to, you know, they, they look at your outfit. Uh, he this type of guy. Mm -hmm. But I've always been comfortable in my skin. Whatever I put on, I, I can wear whatever. Whatever I put on, once I put it on mm -hmm. and I walk out that house, no matter what you say, no matter what he say, no matter what they say. Just don't put that bang on he say. No, I'm just saying. It. Like, I'm just saying. It. Like, whatever I put on and I walk out that when I walk out that house for the world to see, it don't matter what nobody say. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm I know who I am. I know what type of person I am. I know what kind of heart I got. You know, I know where my head at. And nobody else matter. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's the same aspect that I'd apply to life. Like So basically stay focused. On your stay vision. focused yeah. on your vision. On your vision. And because it's not about focused. nobody else. Once you go to seeking validation from people, that's when you get confused. You seeking validation from this person, this person, and this person. That's mm -hmm. three different opinions on you. What mm -hmm. about your own opinion? Right. Like it don't even matter about these three people. I try to open them gates. Like, uh, you could tell me, I hear it. Mm -hmm. I hear you. If it don't make sense to me, then I ain't taking it in. Right. But if it makes sense, I may take it in and adjust it to what my, you know, what I'm already thinking about uh -huh. myself and make a little tweaks in there because you always got to be smart enough to learn. But if your gut or or if God, are you talking to God and they tell you, all right, just follow your own path, then that's what you do. Mm -hmm. Nobody else validation matter because you can be in somewhere a year from now and you can be in a totally different spot. Mm hmm Cool, man. I got I got one more question for you, man. All right. 
with technology now because everything is going through tech with is everything now is is coming with technology so is can can technology help you with, help with, you? With, with, with 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 a basketball career yeah yeah like yeah. with your with your training and stuff like that so oh, it's your training and stuff um, like that. it um, it can show that that what you're doing it can show what you're doing i feel like it can help now because Feel like everybody has technology. Mm-hmm. Even the higher ups, the guys that's in the NBA, the owners, the, mm-hmm. the, they 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 watch kids on technology if they can't make it to no game. A lot of those guys are are, are billionaires, uh, have a busy schedule. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm sure they watch the technology like, all right, this kid might be something. Mm-hmm. So I feel like it can help you. And then, I'm not saying overdo it like you okay. know, with these videos and stuff, but you know, every now and then that can help you. And it's back, like almost back to what you're saying with keeping it clean with yeah, your social media and stuff like that. All you gotta do is keep it clean. You ain't out here promoting the wrong things or getting caught up in the wrong stuff or doing the wrong things. We now today we seeing how basketball players act. Mm-hmm. This summer was a crazy summer for basketball players. We had a lot of incident with women. We had a lot of incident with you know guns and firearms. Mm-hmm. So you can see how it can affect you. And you can see in the positive, like how how it can also help you mm-hmm. um, with the workouts and just staying on that right path, preaching. Like it's been, it's. I feel like this summer was one of the craziest summers for basketball because we had a little bit of violence, not really violence, but we had a little bit of violence, and we had people that's on the straight path talking knowledge into these kids too. So I don't know. You gotta pick your path. You gotta right. pick your path. You may it may be some guys that think they so good that they're invisible. But right. you can be knocked down. Mm-hmm. And it, it may be some guys that think they so good. I want to just keep it clean. I just want to be good, perfect my craft, and be as 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 ice clean. My portfolio should be, oh, he's a clean and neat guy. Mm-hmm. So when everybody meet me and everybody can say the same thing, then I know I'm good. I can always have a job. Mm-hmm. Now, this guy who done did all this, mm-hmm. 20 years later, he might have the money, but money run out. Who, who gonna want you to work for you when you done, you know, did all this other right. stuff? Like, you feel what I'm saying? So, I feel like with basketball, you gotta keep the clean portfolio because it's gonna be a day that you don't play basketball. Or you only mm-hmm. can play so long. You stop at, most people stop at 34. Mm-hmm. At 34, you got a whole life to live. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I might wanna be a college coach, an NBA assistant, anything, but I got a clean slate to go with that. Right. Right. So um what's like that next journey? I know you you mentioned you mentioned your clothing line. Yeah. All right. So and I wanted to touch on it then, but I want to finish with that. Like after basketball, what's next? Uh what's next? Oh, well, my clothing line ain't gonna be forever. I think my clothing line only going where I'm trying to go and make me enough money for a good eight years. And then I want to be a college. By the time I'm done playing basketball, I think I want to be like still doing basketball college wise. Hopefully, Florida State, you know, somewhere with one of my coaches that's all over. So I, my, my coaches got they all over now. I got my one of my coaches, the head coach at Missouri, one on the the head the head assistant. I got Coach Ham still at Florida State, Coach Jones. So mm-hmm. I feel like I had that option that put that. You know that platform to go say, "Hey, I want to work my way up. Can I get this job to get to here someday?" Right. Um. So, coding just for me, right? That's for mm-hmm. right now. I feel like once I get into coaching, I could be a head coach no one day. And you know, if if that's God will, then that's what I'm trying to be. Right. Um. But that is my goal. Mm-hmm. And I think you could do it, man. I think you could be a coach. Yeah. I think that's what I want to do. I don't want to be in the. I, I feel like the the clothing brand is hard, yeah. regardless. Anything selling anything is hard because you always got to have a pitch. You always got to have like a certain audience. Yeah. And, and today, everything changes. Clothes change. Mm-hmm. One one week, everybody want to wear skinny jeans. One week, everybody want to go back to the the nineties and mm-hmm. with this, all this baggy big mm-hmm. stuff. So mm-hmm. it's like. With fashion now, it's just so much at a high level. You never know. Your stuff can go out as quick as it, you feel me, can blow up. Right. You can, you can, your, your brand can die as quick as it can blow up. Mm-hmm. 
nowadays. So I want to do it for about eight years to where my name's still ringing. But after that, put that to rest. I want to go straight into coaching, helping kids. Mm -hmm. Because it's, I'm going to learn a lot of stuff that I can't apply to my game at, at a certain age, but I can apply to other people's games right. and, and, and ways they think and, and what you want to do with your life after basketball. Mm -hmm. Cool, man. Cool. So do you want to, uh, while we're here and you saying about your clothes, do you want to say mm -hmm. your website for your clothing oh. line? Uh, we got the, that stuff. Elias King brand, um, 923 at 350. Y'all tap in, uh, come buy some clothes. Yeah, we gonna sell out fast, so y'all better get the quick. Limited edition stuff. Yeah, definitely. Almost you know, like hats. Yeah, it's gonna limited be edition, baby. <laughs> quick. <laughs> you ain't say nothing about these hats. Nah, no, I like these. I like you these. You say nothing about these hats. Limited I like edition. These. Shop hats. He got shop. everything. He got everything in here. Skates, hats, socks. You know what I'm saying? You come here, you get a cut, you get your board and all. He got everything. <laughs> yeah. Cool, man. Um, all right, man. That's, that about sums it up for this week's episode. My man, Dwayne Bacon and Jairus as your host. So um, don't forget to like, subscribe, follow us on all platforms, Barber Skate Shop and D Bacon on Instagram. That's all I got. I ain't got Twitter, I ain't got Facebook. So if y'all see all that, it ain't me. D Bacon on Instagram, follow me, at me. And uh, thank y'all for having me. Cool, man, I'm glad you're here, man. Yes, sir. All right, see you next week.